Uh, Mr. Chair and members, Senate Bill 1019 appropriates $5 million from the State General Fund to the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund in fiscal year 2025 and declares that the legislature intends that the fund steadily grow to maintain a permanent endowment balance of at least $200 million. With that, I am happy to answer any questions. All right, members, any questions? Once again, as, as I mentioned, um, uh, this if it looks familiar to you, it's because we ran it last year. It w did get a uh, positive vote out of this committee and a positive vote out of the Senate. And as I discussed with the uh, chair of appropriations earlier, this is all part of the part of the pot, if you will. So we do have somebody signed in uh, for sure, and we have a few if, if necessaries. Uh, Madam Vice Chair, uh, Joan Kerber Rocker. Joan, welcome to Health for the first time this session. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, and for the record, my name is Joan Kerber Walker. I am testifying as self. I'm employed as president and CEO of the Arizona Bio Industry Association and also serve as the volunteer chairman of the board of the Opportunity Through Entrepreneurship Foundation. So as um, the chairman shared, this bill actually passed out of committee last year with $50 million. We were in a different budget cycle. You heard earlier the importance and the great work our universities are doing. The Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund is building a bridge between the research that happens at our universities, our hospitals, and our research institutions, and the hospitals and the patients that need the treatments and cures. The reality is, is that crossing that bridge requires three things. It requires that we have a trained workforce for the new technologies that are workforce ready. It requires that our entrepreneurs have the skills to actually turn an idea into a product that helps a patient. And the biggest gap that we have here in Arizona is that of the very high risk early stage funding. That's when that idea hasn't been proven yet. It needs to be tested. It's after the government will give it money and it's before the investors will. If it doesn't cross that bridge, it doesn't become a treatment or cure that helps a patient. That's why 2033. That means that today's economic impact of $38.54 billion grows to over $77 billion. That means we have more money to provide health care. It's more money for education. It is more money for households and families. But most important, 15 seconds. the treatments and cures means that a parent sees, lives to see their child grow up in a disease that today we don't have answers for. So this is an investment in Arizona's future, and we greatly appreciate your support in moving it to the next level. Um, Mr. Chairman, if there are any questions. You know it. What a pro. Already asking if there's any questions. <laughs> Members? Senator Borelli. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And how does this assist the veterans uh, community? Mr. Chair? Joe? Senator Borelli. So when we look at our veterans community, um, there are so many things that our veterans need that we don't have good treatments and cures for. A really good example of this was when this bill was up last year, Tom Eisenman came and testified. And he talked about the work that his small business is doing with the um, veterans community and the VA in providing a new healthcare technology that blocks pain signals and helps veterans that have diabetic neuropathy which is a huge problem for them, and they are suffering. So today, we treat that with opioids, and that, as Senator Birch knows, has real problems. Um, this is a non-opioid-based medical device that blocks the pain signals. And the exciting thing is, since we were here together last year, it got FDA approval, and it's now helping patients. But it took 20 years to get there because it's so hard to do it in Arizona. And so the goal here is more treatments and cures that will help our, our, our veterans. 
help our seniors, help our parents, help our children by creating these new opportunities to grow them here in Arizona. Because I don't want to see Arizona innovations created at ASU get commercialized in Boston. That doesn't create jobs here. It still might help the patient someday, but Arizona's going to miss out. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, John. John, um, on that, on that very point, uh, there, a, I, I 100% appreciate that because I think that's a reality. You can have a university system that's doing a great job in, in having uh, innovations and such, but it's it, it's going to be purchased by somebody. Yeah. And the preference, of course, as you said, to be purchased here. We've had a lot of discussion. You mentioned opioids, so I'll go ahead and, and 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 talk about that a little bit. We've had discussion in this committee a year ago uh, on on other forms of of uh, of medication or or maybe non traditional forms of medication. The innovations that are going on via your entity, some of the partners that you have in your entity, you know, ranging from anything from what we think of traditional pharmaceutical all the way to to things like we heard last year, like psilocybin and all kinds of other things that are out there uh, being tested. I mean, you would consider your entity kind of a hub for bringing all of everybody in that innovation space together, correct? So, Senator Cho, uh, members of the committee, so this is an ecosystem, right. right? It's not one person. The Health Innovation Trust Fund is designed to fill a gap. So. When we speak, as I shared, that I am employed by the Arizona Bio Industry Association. So AZ Bio, shorthand for that, um, has over 300 organizations that are part of it and employ today over 345,000 Arizonans. And they are all working to improve health. The challenge is, is that the traditional modalities that we have are not meeting the needs of patients. There are over 8,000 known diseases. We only had treatments for about half of them. And even the ones that we have treatments for, we don't necessarily know what causes it, and therefore we can't prevent it. Alzheimer's is an, exact, is an example of that. Type 1 diabetes is an example of that. Crohn's disease is an example of that. So. When we look at how do we move these, in, these great new ideas, these discoveries that are better than what we have today, i.e. opioids, or even some of the treatments that we have today, they won't get there if we don't have a bridge. States like Texas, California, Massachusetts, Georgia, Florida are all building their bridges. Arizona needs to build its bridge too. That's where we're asking for your help. Um, one last thing, Senator, is Please. that um, the bill that was passed in 2022 requires a report by the nonprofit partner to be submitted to the President of the Senate, Speaker of the House, and the Governor each year. That report was um, published, and um, it talks about the work that was done in the community philanthropically as we wait for the state funding to come through and what was accomplished. Any other questions, sir? Thank you, Joan. I appreciate being here. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. We have uh, three if necessaries, and it truly is if necessary. Uh, Madam Vice Chair, you want to list the names? Uh, Dylan, I'm not sure how to pronounce the last name, Kristen and Tom. Do any one of you want to? Testify? All right, move the bill. All right. Mr. Chairman, I move SB 1019 with a due pass recommendation. All right, uh, there's no amendments, so if there's any further discussion, seeing none, uh, Secretary, call the roll. Senator Borelli? Aye. Senator Birch? Aye. Senator Gonzalez? Aye. Senator Hattali? Aye. Aye. Senator Shamp? Aye. Senator Schultz? Aye. Seven ayes, zero nays, zero not voting. Our members, we voted seven ayes, zero nays, zero not voting. You've given Senate Bill 1019 a due pass recommendation. We'll move on to 1043 and then finish up with 1050.